Okay, here we are recording now. Hi, welcome everybody. I'm here with Christy from uh, New South Wales, Australia. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Christy. And, I'm, and I am Christy uh, from California, USA. So um, we're here today as part two. We're gonna call it part two of our series um, we, where we are doing um, a very big activation um, for humanity, the planet, the universe, and we're very excited to bring it forward. Um, so um, we'll get right into it. Um, but just want to, you, if you've seen the first, it's good to see the first video first, if you have seen it or if you um, are interested, because they definitely tie together with the energy. Um, and um, let's go right into um, anything you want to start out with, uh, Christy. Any anything particular? Um, nothing in particular. Just okay. Take All right. Okay. All right. So we're going to go right into it. I, I've um, prepared some images uh, because that is my way of sort of um, explaining, I guess. Uh, because I think I've explained in the past. Uh, I and more of a knowing than a visual, so then I bring in visuals to help with that. Now you notice the gold behind me here is a big part of this process. Gold we're bringing in as a, a part is infused into this. Everything that I show you, everything that we bring forward here is all, um, all has frequencies, vibrations, and it is part of the activation of this entire um, two series here. So let me then share a screen um, with the first image here I'm gonna bring forward. Can you see that, Christy? Okay. I can, yes. Okay. Okay, so this, um, this image here is, um, as you recall last time, uh, we brought forth energies um, through portals um, through lighthouse locations um, in Australia, in the USA, in California, and um, also in Chile. Uh, this time, we've got two very similar ones, uh, being California, Mount Shasta, USA, and the Tweed Mountains in um, New South Wales, Australia, as well. So we have very similar points, and we the two Christies here are in these vicinities. Uh, this is where we reside very close to these. Um, and then our, our point, which is actually our second point, because uh, um, USA is first, Australia is third, and our second point this time is China, whereas before it was Chile, as I mentioned. Um, so our, and the points this time are volcanoes. Uh, they're actual volcanoes versus lighthouses. Um, so again, this is Mount Shasta, USA, to just give you a visual where we are. We'll, I'll bring up a map here too that will show you, but wanted to give you uh, images of what these, uh, what these beauties, these beautiful areas look like on our, on our beautiful planet. So Mount Shasta, USA, point one. Point two is the Kunlun Mountain. It's actually the Kunlun Mountain Range, which uh, consists of many volcanoes, and that is in China. Um, and then we have the Tweed Mountains, and um, I believe it's northeastern um, New uh, New South uh, Wales. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this, this point in Australia is about halfway up, right on the east coast. Yes. Um, yeah. Sort of. Um, I live on the easternmost part of Australia. Yes. Uh, yeah. And the whole mountain range there is a a massive caldera of an ancient super volcano. Yeah. So it's very rich and very energetic it's and um, held very sacred by uh, the indigenous people of this area. Um, the particular mountain called Wollumbin in that range, which is extremely sacred um, yeah. and mm -hmm. held closely by the indigenous people. And I'd just like to add while we're yeah. here that all of these mountains, of course, I know Mount Shasta is also extremely sacred um, and I don't know much about the Kunlun Mountains. However, what we have received while 
well um, flowing the information forth for all these activations is that all of these locations are Lemurian portals. Um, and, you know, that, that's why they're so sacred, so energetic yeah. and so amazing. Yeah. And that's why we're working with them yeah. today. Beautiful, beautiful. And you know, uh, Christy, I think the Tweed Mountains in Australia, they may be the most ancient ones, actually. Um, I did read and there's been a lot of erosion there because there's been there for so long. Uh, but when I saw this image, I thought, oh my God, that's so beautiful. And it is so lush and, and beautiful. Uh, yeah. The dynamics are very different in all three of them in terms of the terrain and everything. But yeah, yeah, we're in the subtropics here and it is really lush and they're not very big mountains. A yeah. lot of us doesn't have big mountains. Um, yeah. I think it is such an ancient landscape. Yeah. I notice in the Kunlun Mountains, they have these beautiful little bodies of water within those mountains and they are like aquamarine. You mean the color aquamarine? You can see them, uh, you know, from a Google, but it's just amazing when you see it. Looks, you know, it looks kind of like, you know, dirt soil, you know. But when you look, I mean, so you know, it's so rich with other um, elements um, within it. Um, but again, both of these two are mountain ranges, whereas Mount Shasta. Um, has actually four cones in it, and four cones, four volcanoes within the one. And then it has another small one called Black Butte, uh, which is right beside it. Uh, but these are going, these are the areas we're focusing on uh, with these Lemurian portals, as Christy mentioned. And also um, something that has come through uh, as part of this activation is pure gold magic. Um, and within this, uh, I'll get more into the gold part as you see behind me also, uh, but within this image is like um, uh, polygons um, and they're all represented in different shades of gold. Um, there's a dove and then there's the um, phoenix rising right here. So these are all very applicable to this and it's all encodements. I couldn't even tell you exactly what it is, but I know it's a part of this and um, it's a part of this activation. So um, just wanted to share that with you. All right. Um, yeah. that, that Phoenix energy, I mean, the dove of course is about bringing peace, but that Phoenix energy is so much about rebirth and transmutation. And yes. Um, yeah. Um, you know, that's really, I think, um, my husband who channels the Dragon Collective, when we were talking about this activation, they, I was wondering if what we were doing would cause um, sort of more density to rise from us as our beings come into more of yeah. a unified. And they really said, um, you know, this, what we're doing is about helping to transmute all of that old density and so that phoenix energy is a really beautiful and important part of this and i'm sure we have the phoenix collective coming in to support it as yeah well. yeah that's so and that that reminds me why why christy mentioned that is um she mentioned last time too she works with her husband gary and we we have this um routine now <laughs> i guess right christy uh where the two of them work together to get information. And then I'm working to bring information. We collaborate during this period of time and we just start putting these pieces of the puzzle together. And it's mm -hmm. just this amazing, wonderful process that um, is- uh, yeah, It's like as we're <laughs> receiving downloads and inspiration and yeah. knowing and then, and then I can run over to him and say, <laughs> yeah. Here are to dragon <laughs> and then even today i mean she sent me some information from the two i got some information and it just sparked something else that i needed to add to this today so it was uh yeah it's just an amazing process and i'm so grateful that um uh we're working in this this way and this is a triad this is a definitely a, a triad um, that we're working with and many others may be working in this way too but it's something that's really exciting. 
So, okay. So uh, let's see. Anything else with this image? Anything else, Christy? No. no. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring the actual tetrahedron, which I'm calling Tetra 2, uh, forward now. Let's see. Oops, not doing it. Hold on there. Hold on there. Let me see here. There it is. Uh, nope. I don't see it yet here. Oh. Okay. You see it now, Christy? Okay. All right, so um, raise that up a little bit. Okay, so this, uh, this we're calling Tetra 2. The other one was Tetra 1. Again, these are volcano nodes and portals, Lemurian portals, as Christy mentioned, whereas before they were lighthouse locations. Um, and we have a similar location and points. We have the USA and we have Australia, very close proximity to in in comparison to you know China and Chile <laughs> but very close proximity uh, to where they were before and again this is um, I'm in the USA and the California and Christy is here and uh, in the in the Australia um, area so um, we are points one and three um, and these points are bringing forth uh, the symbols of the, the lion. And this time it is a bird again, but it's a dove location or a dove, uh, which the other one was an albatross. And dove is, uh, of course, peace, uh, freedom. Uh, so it's a big, um, a big message here. And, um, and it is in the uh, Kunlun Mountains in China. Uh, which is interesting. So some of you may even get more information as we go through this. Um, but Mount Shasta, Lion, the number 15, these are all encoded. Uh, the Kunlun Mountains in China, the number 11, and you see the coordinates here. I won't read those off. You can see those. Um, and the number 11 with the dove symbol here. And then in Australia, the Tweed Mountains, um, the whale, again with the number 13 um, so we have 15 11 and and 13 which is a numerological is the number 12 and this tetrahedron so these are the these are the volcanoes these are the points um, that we are connecting again you can see the coordinates for your information there and if you would look at this with the original tetrahedron um, these really back up to each other. So I can sort of draw it out. It looks like that. <laughs> so they are playing a, a role together. They are working together. The points are all working together. It's all enmeshed, woven in together in these points. Actually, this is interesting, Christy, because um you know, when the two tetras are together, it's like one beautiful big diamond. And, yeah. you know, the diamond light frequency is um, one of the core frequencies of the new earth field. It's like the diamond light is like the glue that holds it all together. It yes. holds, it holds yes. all the different layers of all the different beautiful energies and frequencies that we've been. Yes. Um, anchoring into the new field and that that are making it up so it's like yeah it's the beautiful base structure of that field and so for this to be a diamond is it's just another beautiful symbol of significance yes that's exactly right yeah yeah it's a, a beautiful um way to to see it there that it's exactly right um really really cool very exciting um so um and it's also like our light body, like the diamond, you know, uh, sun light body. I mean, it's all connected. This is all connected, obviously. Um, but we'll, we'll speak a little bit more about uh, this too. But we wanted to show you first the visual 
of these locations to get it, put it in perspective. Um, again, this is all on our beautiful Gaia. So, I mean, everything is beautiful no matter where we are here. Um, but this puts it in perspective. You know, freedom is a big um, thing that we're looking for. Peace, this is part of this. And um, the number coding also part of this um, along with these, these volcanoes here. Anything else on this, uh, Christy? Um, no, but do you want to, shall we talk about Hawaii being? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. So um, Hawaii is pretty much placed right in the middle of the two tetras that we've been activating. Yeah. And we were told by the Dolphin Collective that Hawaii actually acts as a, an antenna um, for Gaia. So, um, yeah, I guess, I guess Hawaii is just this beautiful emanator of divine frequencies. Though the dolphins did tell us that, that, uh, Gaia tends to tone the frequencies down a little bit, um, <laughs> for her human occupants, because <laughs> if she really let them loose, um, humans living on Hawaii wouldn't have a very nice time. And so it's, um, a bit more toned down. However, we were also told that after this activation, there might be events in Hawaii that would be noticed by the people living there um, or just ways of relating to that area that might have changed a little bit. So right, that would right. be interesting if that yeah. happens. Very, um, very much so, yeah. And of course, being that antenna is why it's such a beautiful spiritual place that people are drawn to and um, you know, feel such synergy with, um, though it can also stimulate and bring up your stuff, you know, your density, if you have a lot of stuff to clear. So, which also tends to happen around a lot of the Lemurian portals. Yeah. I know it happens in the area that I live in. It's a very, a place that draws a lot of spiritual people and, um, yeah, it really makes you deal with your stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'd say Shasta would be the same, right? Christine? Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, the other thing that um, Christy and Gary, uh, I think the information you got on Hawaii was that, uh, because one of the questions I asked was, you know, a lot of times when we do this kind of work, it's in a triad. So it's in a three, a triad. Um, and uh, so one of the questions that Christy asked uh, Gary and the Dragon Collective was, you know, is, is uh, Hawaii our triad? Does that make the triad complete here? And I guess the answer was it does in a sense um, for this particular energetic work that we're doing here. Um, you know, that's not to say we might not have something uh, somewhere else, but at this time, I think that antenna that is um, Hawaii because Hawaii is so energetic in itself that it sort of completes this triad in a sense. Yeah. So that's very, very cool. Uh, so this is, um, this is Hawaii here. So you can see that we're basically accounting for it in that area. Either that or it's actually right between. So, um, I can imagine the vibration there. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. We'll see if we hear. Uh, I don't know if you know anybody in Hawaii, but anybody from Hawaii that uh, experienced this, let us know. <laughs> let us know. Because, uh, yeah, we're curious to hear about that. Okay, um, let's, go to the, let's go to the next one here. All right. Whoops. We're going to go. Let's see. I want to make sure I have that there too. We have so many up here. I was in in visual mode this time. <laughs> okay. All right. Did you get this one, uh, Christy? Yeah, good, good. I kind of sent it last minute. Um, I just started on it this morning. It was like, oh my God, I got to do this. <laughs> so uh, it was very interesting. Um, so this one came up. Um, 
as part of completing it, and again, a visual um, with some information. And I'm going to read to you. This was actually channeled through Gary, the Dragon Collective, um, and uh, with Christy asking the question, basically, of the importance of the gold in this activation. Um, and what he said was, I'm going to read straight from what he said. He said, as I am one who is connected in conscious unity and oneness with the vibration of gold, I recognize it as an essential vibrational piece that without it, the structure of all that is does not hold together. So the gold is essential to bring this in, in and have it activate and bring and marry all of the pieces to support this becoming, as you say, online. It does not just work in one way, it works in many. It vibrates into cells, it vibrates into the grid form and on and on. It is supporting, it is a supporting element in the ability to activate and without it, you cannot give this grid power. Without this element, this vibration, it would stay in its dormant state. So that's what um, the Dragon Collective said through Gary which is really exciting. So um, just a little bit here about this is that I'm getting some kind of weird noise here. Are you hearing anything, Christy? No. Okay. All right. So, um, all right. So um, we have these threads. We've got threads here uh, of gold. And I'll give you a little bit more insight on that in a minute. Um, we have a, a hexagon, which is also a cube. If you can see it three-dimensionally, it's a hexagon and it's a cube in both these locations. And these are basically spread out between our, um, the first tetra that we did, our first points, which was in Long Beach and um, the uh, Byron Lighthouse, the Lion Lighthouse and the Byron Lighthouse. And then our second points, which is Mount Shasta and uh, between mountains. So these are all interconnecting. So this is sacred geometry. Um, the hexagon um, is a, um, a crystalline structure of hydrogen, uh, which I'm gonna mention to you. I'll give you some information on that that came through. Um, again, I get this little tits and bits and then I have to research and bring it and it just comes together in this interesting puzzle, which forms a sacred geometry. Um, and then we've got, again, I'm bringing forth uh, the dove, uh, the freedom piece and, and bringing them in this triad uh, flight pattern um, here with below the phoenix, of course, rising, the phoenix being all of us, of course, rising into um, our freedom and liberation. Um, so these two points are connected. There's something within these two points. Maybe that's something Gary can share with us later, <laughs> Christy, because they are connected in, in a way of, um, I'm not real sure. It, it's almost like, um, it's some energetic uh, that I'm not certain of, but they, they definitely have uh, this connection. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's why these lines are coming forward in this way. And this one again, um, with the hexagon and the cube, uh, which is going to be a representation of gold and hydrogen. Again, the, uh, the dove and flying in a triad formation and the phoenix rising into that formation so that and the number one here is the um, atomic number of hydrogen which um, yeah I want to tell you about now so now that I so let me just get into this this is kind of um, chemistry which I'm not a chemist <laughs> maybe in another lifetime I am or in a past life but I know I've done some coding that are chemically uh, oriented, so light coding. So uh, here's some insight into that, um, and it's also into gold. Um, I've known that I'm, I've been very connected to gold through a lot of work and revelations, and the importance of gold within this um, 
is gold exhibits superior bio um, um, how am I saying this biocompatibility within the human body gold exhibits extreme ductility for instance one ounce of gold could be strung in a very thin wire 50 miles or 80 kilometers and also gold does not tarnish uh, in comparison to other highly conductive metals like silver and copper it doesn't tarnish so that's something very important and when i talked about the thread about stringing and the ductility of gold that's these threads here that i've created um, for this activation um, so we can see them as actual gold thread um, gold has a crystal structure that is a face centered cube it's cubic the crisp the, the structure of gold is cubic the um, atomic number of gold is 79 which could be seven in numerology now I'm going to bring in hydrogen which mentioned I mentioned this is um, the symbol here because hydrogen actually um, the symbol the crystal uh, structure of hydrogen is a hexagon so we have hexagon and a cubic crystal structures so now we're putting hydrogen and gold together um, so hydrogen is the most abundant chemical substance in the universe non remnant stars are made are mainly composed of hydrogen in the plasma state Again, the crystalline structure is the of hydrogen is the hexagon, which is a six-sided polygon. Electrode potentials we're gonna talk about now, which is the conductivity, are measured with respect to hydrogen. Okay, so we're going to amp the electrode potential in our gold here through the abundance of hydrogen, which again, remember hydrogen is the main, mainly, uh, the universe is mainly composed of hydrogen. So we're gonna amp the abundance here uh, through hydrogen, which is through the plasma energy coming into the earth now, creating now a metallic hydrogen superconductor. Uh, and I actually understand, and this research led me to see that there is actually some kind of development of a metallic hydrogen. Um, with great potentials here. And this may be some future technology that is in the works right now. Uh, but this is all connected. This is all part of this, um, part of this. So yeah, it's very interesting. You know, it may not be so understandable, but when you talk about the hydrogen, you talk about the universe and the plasma and that, you know, that's m mainly made of hydrogen. And then gold is coming into this. Gold is, is a big part of this activation, which is assisting us. So it's all coming together. Those pieces of puzzles are coming together. So I love, I love how technical you are. <laughs> I'm technical at all. It's all about feeling and energy for me. So. <laughs> so we're just, we're just balancing a little bit. Balancing. Yeah. I love the connections you formed. Yeah. Before. So, so this is pure gold magic, which is, um, gold is a huge conductor of light and we're opening to the universe here. Um, or we're kind of, it's the alchemy, uh, you know, the alchemist transforming all energies into higher frequencies and light and love. And so, um, and this is interesting because last October I saw the earth in gold in last October 2019. So I thought something big was going to happen then, but um, um, so I, I don't know. It's, it's coming together now. So, all right. Yeah. Do you want me to talk a little bit about the, um, the energetic side of what we're actually doing? So, yes, please. Um, yes. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, okay. So, what we're, what we're actually doing by bringing these 
grid lines online is we're unlocking the Lemurian codes that have been held in our water. So when, um, when the civilization of Lemuria um, had its downfall, let's say, it was at the same time as Atlantis and was sort of brought on by the downfall of Atlantis. Um, a lot of Lemurians transitioned into non-physical at the one time. And instead of their beautiful wisdom being lost, they actually shifted their amazing heart space wisdom into the water. As we know that water carries memories and carries technology and um, in this case it's holding all of the Lemurian wisdom and the codes waiting for us to come into alignment into those frequencies that allow us to embody those beautiful codes and that innate wisdom um, that heart-centeredness and so we've come into a time now where the frequency of the earth has risen enough and enough of us are awakening to this beautiful knowledge that um, we're able to now activate and unlock these codes and not only do they reside within the waters of Gaia within our oceans and rivers but because water is all connected at its source it's all one consciousness it is also connected to the waters inside of our bodies in in every cell of our being in all of our in all molecules of everything on Gaia and therefore that beautiful wisdom is is within all of us within all and so as we unlock these codes that that wisdom becomes accessible to all of humanity to all beings on our earth um, and the the frequency of the water is able to be realized the beautiful high frequency and um, you know it's really paving paving the way to the new earth paradigm for us um, so that we're able to become heart centered beings yeah mm -hmm. yeah beautiful beautiful and the gold is actually a part of that structure supporting it um, within the water and within our being so okay one more screen share um and then um yeah and then christy might have you go ahead and and uh say what you want to before we start up here with our um white language will be coming here shortly Okay, so this is um, when we first started this round two or part two, um, I think we had just kicked it off and I received a light code in uh, my sleep time. And the light code was this times a thousand. <laughs> it was so. I was instructed to bring forward certain components of it, which have um, coding for us. Uh, so this is filled with light codes here. Um, and then once I did it, I had it already completed. And then I got guidance to um, instruct to add gold to it. So this is where the gold uh, came in. So I basically infused this light code with gold through a Liberty gold coin um, that um, is fully um, amping, amping this up even more. And this uh, Liberty also has some more meaning um, as well, uh, in which I have a message uh, from the goddess of Liberty for us here. Um, but I'll get into that in a minute, um, and I'll just go ahead, uh, Christy, if you want to go ahead with your, um, something you want to say before, and then we'll get into the rest and then come into the light language. But I'm going to leave this up during this because I want, if everybody could fully integrate this as they're listening here, um, and, uh, 
uh, I think uh, you'll find some activations. I'm definitely getting some, a lot of energy going through my body right now. Yeah, me too. It's really started. <laughs> so um, we might just kick off the process with a little bit of an invocation. Yes, that'd be great. Um, both of us, Christy, um, we both come from the same soul grouping where we stem from the mother energy. We seed planets and we seed light throughout all that is. And this is why we've come together now to do this from a higher calling. So we call in now the wisdom of the mother as we are her conduits of light. We are the consciousness of the water and of the sun. Mm. We are the keys to unlock the gateway and ignite the grid of remembrance. We call in the divine support that surrounds us, opening to it and allowing its energy to flow through us. To bring resolution to the Lemurian and Atlantis timelines, shifting from duality and separation to a state of unification. We acknowledge the gatekeepers to the Lemurian portals and thank them and ask them for their support. As we open to that which has been lying in wait for us, we allow the beauty and the wisdom of Lemuria to overflow in each cell of our being and each molecule of our waters to ignite our crystalline heart and to pave the way into the golden era. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Nice. Okay. So we have the energies um, of the triad here, of the divine feminine. Here with us today through the divine mother, the goddess Liberty, is here with us the goddess luna is here with us the two christies here are in gratitude to bring forth the presence of the creative energy as we provide this amazing and very important very big activation of the lemurian portals for humanity gaia in her emerald ray the animal kingdoms crystal kingdoms, elementals in all their glory, the whales and dolphin collective, the dragon collective, the founder and the ancient builder races, the fae collective, and so many more here with us today. This is big folks, and we are told that the skies may reveal something for us all to further validate this. Think colors, think blue and purple, right, Christy? <laughs> that's what yeah. Gary that's what the dragon collective told uh, through Gary <laughs> yeah alright um, I feel very energetic so I'm ready <laughs> we create an access we create an access to the universe in a sense through this activation allowing the access and connection to the Christ consciousness to fully embody our being and oneness of all of creation through pure golden magic and sacred geometry. This is the message from the goddess of liberty that came through today. I am the goddess of liberty. I speak to you through this one about freedom and forgiveness. These two words go hand in hand. You cannot have freedom if you do not forgive. Forgiveness is a double-edged sword as there is forgiveness of self and forgiveness of others. The times that are upon you now will beg for that forgiveness. You can relate this to the fall of Atlantis and the many Atlantises that you have created in your duality experiences. You created this to experience the opposite of love as that is all you knew as creators and be and being the explorers and warriors that you all are, you felt this would be an easy task. Well, we won't go into the details that created those extracurricular activities that yielded a path that, let's say, had your full attention, but we will tell you now 
that that cycle is complete. The opportunity to declare your freedom through forgiveness is now. And this, my beautiful golden ones, is your liberation. Many of you walk this path as Lemurians who fully knew who you were and had full intention of ascending in your natural physical bodies. This is where you are now, not to say you will fully ascend tomorrow, as you know, this is a journey to be fully experienced. The two Christies here are connecting to the Lemurian and other aspects as they activate these portals along with many others doing similar work at other locations. These portals are available for you now with this activation to tap into as you journey into your freedom, forgiveness, and liberation as individuals and as the human collective. We are here with you. We support you. We love you. Welcome home, masters of the universe. <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. God is liberty. Woo. Woo. You just have to say that. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So um, I'm going to take this down here, but uh, please you know, Im embed that in your mind. You can certainly stop the video if you need longer. Uh, and if you're, of course, watching the video. Uh, but I'm going to bring light language here. And light language is um, kind of sealing this in a sense, uh, bringing this fully into activation um, for um, bringing the frequencies and vibra uh, vibrations, making them fully available. Um, so in the light language, it speaks to your heart. And it's not meant to be understood in words, but to be felt in your all-knowing heart. Feel into the frequencies and vibrations and allow yourself to experience in whatever way, whatever way is best for you for this activation. So now we're going to bring the energy of the golden white light. See that now surrounding you, golden white light surrounding you in this moment. We'll take some deep breaths here. I just have to say, I hear doves cooing outside my window right now. Ta jona e ta o na i jo o ta pa pa e na i jo na mahita. O la la la, o ta 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 ta, o na 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 na, o na ja da da, o na i na ma o ja na i na ma o o la o la i na a ju o ta pa ku na, pa ku na pa ku na i ju na, ti na ti na a kai. A kaina ina ina una ana ina una ana una ana una. Da na i no o ja ta pa ka na a ta a ta a ta a ta a ta a ta o na i jo na ma a ka i na a na a na a na a na a na a na to na i ja pa ka te na a la ku. 
ti i jutim pe, jetim pe kain, na ina. Ina 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 Aina a a a a a na 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 o ja ta pekun te pekun na a kai a kai a kai tu o ja ta pekun o o na ma ala ana i ta pa 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 kun na a a a ta 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 o ja na a kai a kai a kai tu ana i i ju u ta pe i ju ta pe kai. Tuna ma aka. U ti a, a ti a ti a ti a ti a ti o u jana ma o o na ma kun u tu pa kain na ana 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 o ju ju tu tu. O ju tu 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 a kain a kain. Ti ana a a a tu. A ni i ju o ta pe kun na ala u ta pa kain. Tu u ta a kain i na ma a u ja ta pa kain. Tu a a a a na u ja te a kain i te kain a te kain. O na a kain o na i jo o ta pa kain o na a la a ta a kain. U ta pa kain. A na o jo na a ta a ta a ta. Tu u ja na ma a kain i na ma a kain u ta pa kain i na ma a u ja na tu tu ti i jo o na a ta kain a ta kain i na a la u ja na ma u u na a ta kain Tu u u u u ta a a a a a a a u na i ja na a. Tijo o na e e o o na e e jo o te ke e na ma a kai a pa kai na. Tu ni a jo o ta a la ku o na ma e jo o ta kai na ma. Ti a pa ku na a jo o ta pa ku na ma a kai. Ya ta pa ku o na e na. Unai na ma uja a a ta ya ta. Tuja na ma a ya ta. O ta 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 kai i na ma uja a kai. A kai. A kai.
Tu nama a jo o ta pakon. Ida ala ona i jo o nama ana. Ti i ina ti i ina ma ala o jana. Ti jana o ta pakon. Ta pakon na i na ma ala kon. Ta jana makai. Te pakai. Te pakai. Uta. Ti jana. Ti jana akin. Akin. <laughs> we are complete. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was fun. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh. Oh, that was this is good. This is good. My hands are on fire. Very exciting. My heart is beating very uh very fast. Mm. <sighs> And don't forget we were told by Dragon to ground after this because That's I know right. after our first activation, um, I didn't ground after it. And the next few days after that, I was having such energetic movement and such craziness within my body. Um, and today's was, I felt it even stronger. So yeah, yeah. important to ground. That's good. Yeah, yeah, I, I wrote that little note too uh, as a reminder because I know you you said that or you guys saying that's great. That is, um, yeah, grounding, very good. You know, it's funny because I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm grounded because I'm so close to the ocean. Um, mm -hmm. So it allows that for me easier. Um, but that, um, yeah. Yeah, actually... That's yeah. That's interesting because we were told by the Whale Collective a few weeks ago that through all these huge transformational energies that we're experiencing right now, uh -huh. that the best to ground into is actually the water. The water, um, yeah, because it's holding such a stable frequency, whereas the Earth is having a lot of density purged from yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. What a wonderful thing to ground into right now. And of yeah. course, we're just unlocking the water now. So. That's right. That's right. I, I was guided to do a drum um, a little serenade uh, with the water this morning. So I took my drum there and um, uh, in preparation for this. So, um, yeah, I think that's part of part of it, too, to sort of allow that grounding to settle in <laughs> right in front of it. Not a better place. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think we're complete here, so I will turn off recording, but um, all those who see this video, thank you so much for joining us thank here. Um, 
I probably renamed this one, uh, or the first one, part one, part two, because uh, we didn't exactly know at that time, and now we do. Um, so uh, be sure and check them both out if you're interested um, in looking at one as well. But thank you all for joining us in this activation. And I'm sure Christy is going to write something beautiful as a follow-up to this as well. Um, yeah, we've got downloads coming through to write, yeah. write some more, maybe the bigger picture of what this is all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was just so, so beautiful. So um, be on the lookout for that because it's always beautiful. And she usually posts that on her Facebook. So thank you very much, uh, folks. Namaste to all. Thank you so much.